Good evening, everyone. It's Andy DeLeo, better known as Cancer Geek, and this is Observations at the End of One. This evening is a very important um, topic that I want to address. It's actually been a topic that I've wanted to address for some time, uh, but I've been waiting. And this evening uh, is the right time. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Adam Hill, who about two hours ago uh, shared a tweet. Um, if you want to actually see the tweet, it's on my page. It's liked, um, but I'm going to read it to you. And what Dr. Hill states is that today a colleague told me that a psychologist told her not to seek mental health treatment for her medical student child because it may affect their career. This happened to me too several times. And this is partially why people are dying in medicine every day. Something has to change. He goes on to share with us that in many careers, not just medicine, professional competency is tied to mental health treatment and employers, licensing agencies, insurance carriers ask intrusive questions about mental health uh, treatment to maintain certification in the career. In addition to that, a few months ago, a couple of my colleagues, uh, well, not my colleagues, but friends that happen to be physicians, shared with me a couple of questions that comes from their licensing bodies. And one of those questions is, are you currently under the care of a physician or psychologist, or have you ever participated in any physician recovery program established pursuant to a state statute? And what they shared with me was, is that uh, they have to answer this question, no, uh, because if not, uh, it could impact their ability to uh, care or to be a physician or to practice. Um, and I just have to say that we ask physicians on a daily basis to come to work, to spend time with patients, to build a relationship, to build a rapport, to lay their hands on patients uh, at their most vulnerable times and to assess patients for the help that they need and the care that they need at that point in time. Oftentimes they're telling patients that you have cancer. Uh, maybe they're diagnosing patients uh, that have a broken leg. Uh, things that are altering their course of life and their trajectory uh, and, and changing their worlds. And it's completely fucked up to me that we do not allow physicians to go out and seek the help that they need because of the emotional stress and turmoil that they're facing on a daily basis. We're expecting physicians not to talk about it, not to be able to share that burden with other people, that we're expecting physicians to literally be robots, to compartmentalize it, to put it in a box, and to never speak of it. And then we're wondering why physicians um, are having problems, whether it's at home, it's at work, uh, it's just with their self, or they're questioning why they even want to be physicians anymore. And so while many of my physician friends cannot address the elephant in the room, I can. And I'm addressing it tonight, and I'm going to continue to address it. Because if we want to stop physician burnout, we can stop with the BS about the EMRs and health IT and whatever else. What we need to address is changing the criteria and the standards that allow physicians to talk openly, to seek the professional help that they may need to share the burden with other people so that they can offload that. Because at the end of the day, the cost of healthcare is being impacted by loss of physicians, the time of physicians being there, their inability to, to be emotionally present and connect with their patients, and patients are being impacted by it as well. And it's not because physicians don't want to do the right thing, but we're not allowing physicians to always do the right thing because we're not giving them the ability to care for themselves. And so with that, I will leave all of you with this. Tomorrow, when you go to work and you see a colleague or a physician and you think they may be having a bad day, give them a hug, a handshake, remind them that you see them, that you hear them, that you're there to listen and lend a shoulder and that you can do it in a private, uh, trusting way and manner because that may just be enough to give them a little bit of the relief that they're seeking. And so with that, I wish you all a wonderful night. And remember, at the end of the day, change happens at the end of one.